standing among you. Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not get it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. that are missed. 
America, and the wider one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church that we confess. I don't know. We've heard reports already that many churches are not having the same attendance post-pandemic that they had pre-pandemic. And there's probably down the road a lot of reorganizing and reforming that's going to take place in the next couple of years. Well, here's an easy one. Are the Bears going to win today? <laughs> yes! Okay, really, I don't know, but I think they have a good shot. The part of our gospel is, is that there are things that are still mysteries in our world. That for whatever reason, God hasn't chosen to reveal to us yet. After all, our universe has been under construction for billions and billions of years, our planet for hundreds of billions of years, and it's only in the last 50 that we've managed to poke our heads outside the atmosphere and actually have a little look around. That there is, in a sense, with comes and looking that all that God has created and made, a sense of awe, of wonder, and hopefully a little humility, that though we would like to know everything that is going on, both in the present and the future, we have to trust that only God is present in the future, and that it is God who is controlling the future, both ours and that of our entire world. This is the counterintuitive nature that Jesus brings us to in our gospel. For if we're honest, we want to be those who are first. We want to know everything that's going to happen. We want to have that secret insight in everything and know exactly what's going to happen in our future. And yet Jesus says that his followers will be last, that they'll be like children, that they will that they will be the ones who simply trust and not necessarily understand everything that's going on. The image of a child is a little interesting for us. In Jesus' time, children weren't really seen as being particularly worthwhile. You see, children had a lot of diseases and stuff, the kind of stuff that we vaccinate against today. And it was pretty much equally likely that if you were born, you had about an equal chance of dying as you did of living to be an adult. And so the prevailing attitude was kind of, well, you know, if they have an equal chance of living or dying, we probably shouldn't get too attached to them in case they don't make it. And so it was only really when you became an adult that you kind of became a full human being. And, you know, if you made it to adulthood, then, you know, people said, oh, you're pretty cool now, you made it, so we're going to love you back. So that the people who are hearing this, Jesus' words are absolutely mind-boggling. Why would you ever want to become like a child? Why would you ever want to become like somebody who's not seen as anything? And yet that's what Jesus calls us to. I find it interesting in our own context, though, because if there's one thing that I've learned from children over the last couple of years is that they have two things. They are insatiably curious. They ask questions about everything in this new world that they've just been born into, and they're very trusting. They're willing to accept pretty much, at least until a certain age, every answer that I give them. Now, I honestly, I try to always give the proper answer. I don't try to lie to them, I promise. <coughs> and I wonder if it's kind of a model for us as well to be insatiably curious about the world around us, Jesus doesn't say that we shouldn't ever explore or try to understand the things and the phenomena that are going on in the 
accomplish God's purposes. So that, and then, well, I guess we got into the trust there. So we're curious about the world, but trusting when we hit that wall in God's promises. God's promises that are revealed in the first half of our gospel, which is Jesus' second prediction in Mark, that he's going to the cross. Last week we heard the first prediction and how the disciples misinterpreted it and Jesus chided Peter for his lack of faith. And this week, once again, we hear Jesus say that he's going to the cross and once again the disciples are a lot like all of us, that they don't understand, that they don't understand the significance of what he's saying. Because the significance of what Jesus is saying is precisely where we do see God revealed in our world. That we may not understand the mystery of God or why God does things or does this or not does that. Or the universe around us that we can't fully comprehend. But what we are invited to see is the person of Jesus. God made flesh and come among us. And the way that God works in our world to save and redeem it and to bring life on the cross. Incidentally, the disciples in Mark's gospel consistently do not understand anything about what Jesus says until after his crucifixion. And we, likewise, are continuing to learn after our baptism into Jesus' death resurrection, about the significance of what he's done in our world. The mystery that God has come into our world as a human being, that he's died on our cross so that we believe that he has conquered death and brought us life. That God is working in our world even if we can't always see it or understand it to bring life out of death. It's the mystery we encounter each week when we gather around the table. When we gather to believe that this bread that we eat is somehow Jesus' body and this wine we drink is somehow Jesus' blood. And theologians have tried to explain for 2,000 years how this could possibly be possible. They've come up with many different ways of explaining it, and theories, and images, and all kinds of things, some which are helpful and some which have not been helpful. But ultimately, we all come and gather, and it's still a mystery. That we are just invited to believe in those words, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. That somehow Jesus is present in this meal, strengthening our faith, enabling us to humbly go forth and love and serve our neighbor and live in the mystery of things that we don't understand in the world around us. That here when we gather at this meal, Jesus transforming us into those beloved children who are insatiably curious and very trusting, insatiably curious about the world that God has created, and very trusting the God who in Jesus has come into our world and saved it. So call, siblings of Christ, come to this table and receive the bread which is Jesus' body and the wine which is Jesus' blood. And may they strengthen you to be curious about the world that God has created around you. And then go, siblings in Christ, and share the good news of what God is doing with all those who love and serve this coming week. Amen. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Field Number Number 641. All are welcome.
can't read the words without my glasses. My glasses fall out my hands. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for our church, that we may give thanks to your name, for it is good. Especially we pray for our siblings at St. James the Apostle Catholic Church here in Glen Ellen, and for all Christian churches throughout the world. We pray for our community, that we may show by our good life that our works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. Especially we pray for SE Adult Daycare and all social service agencies and for all who are struggling in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for our nation that we may sow a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who make peace. Especially we pray for all places dealing with the Delta variant of COVID-19, for healing and peace in Chicago and all cities, and for all those affected by wildfires out west. We pray for our world that we may be last and servant of all, welcoming you. Especially we pray for all nations dealing with the Delta variant of COVID-19 and for peace in Afghanistan and all countries. We pray for St. Luke, that we may continue to spread God's word of peace, hope, and love to everyone, everywhere we go. Especially we pray for Jennifer, Jim, Judy, Laura, Tim, and Zachary, who are all ill and are recovering. For Deanna, Ellen, Judy, Marilyn, and Roger, and Nancy, who are not with us in worship. And for the saints who have gone before us, Lord, in your mercy, for what else shall we give thanks or pray today? Prayers for Jim, who is now at Mary and Joy, and may his improvement continue. Lord, in your mercy, Richard. you're our prayer. We thank you, Matthew Miles. Lord, in your mercy, you're our prayer.
disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
price given for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. 